use these connective things to train ourselves. That's my niece Frida, who is sitting in my brother's lap, playing the game of Google. She names uh, something like Lime, and Dad uh, does something weird with the computer, and then a lot of Lime pictures shows up. Very cute, but to her, Google is a game. She's going to grow up regarding Google as a game. Her kid brothers uh, are not even going to remember Google because by the time they're getting uh, up adult, well, Google is going to be replaced by something else. This also brings up how this is affecting the brains. Because, of course, the perception of the world gets affected by the environment we're growing up in. And there have been attempts, of course, doing brain training games. It was a very interesting uh, result this week. There is a British television program called Bang, so Bang Goes the Theory, which is a wonderful uh, title for a program that actually tried testing the claims of these brain training games, and they found a rather negative result. It didn't seem to have much of an effect. And I somewhat agree with the stuff, and I also disagree. I think we can actually use brain training programs to improve in our mind, but we probably need to do it you know, just like we need to go to the gym much more often than just uh, uh, often half an hour every other week. It seems that the most brain training probably needs to be quite deliberate and quite aimed at what actually can be improved. Because in general there is a bottleneck principle of everything we want to improve in our lives. There is usually one thing that is holding us back the most. So if you fix that one, we get the most uh, out of it. If I got a choice between a pill making me smarter and a pill teaching me time management, the time management pill would be at, uh, at least a tenfold, perhaps a hundredfold, much more effective than making it smart. Because uh, really, it doesn't matter how smart I am if I forget my meetings. And I think the same thing is going to go for this training. But right now, we haven't figured out how to do the correct testing. To, we don't have an enhancers consumer group yet. So, we have a lot of ways of improving the brain. Some of them are small, some of them are environmental, some are collective, some of them are traditional, and some of them might be quite radical. Uh, we of course end up with the question, why should we be doing this? And I think one reason is to avoid things like this. We're making an awful lot of mistakes, both individually and as a society. And just reducing the incidence of forgotten keys uh, uh, would be good. It's actually apparently costing tens of millions of pounds every year in the UK alone. And well, that tank is probably not cheap either. They're going to have to pay on that off for a long time. So if we can find ways of reducing this kind of mistakes, that's good. But we also get a lot of individual effects. I don't have the time to get into this, but this is an interesting and rather controversial area of what impact does intelligence actually have on how well your life goes. And it seems that the main conclusion is being stupid is bad. It makes you unhappy, it makes you more likely to be a victim of crime, it makes it likely that you die young and get ill. Being smart is less of a benefit than being not dumb. So, getting the dumb people up, that perhaps might be the top priority. But then again, we have these interesting results that the top one-fourth percent people, they produce twice as much um, patterns per person, which is probably a measure of doing something useful for society, hopefully, um, as the next percent. So imagine giving a drug to all of society that just brought up IQ by one or two points. We wouldn't notice that effect individually. We would probably just notice the side effects and think it was a pretty bad drug. But it seems, given some data um, uh, that I've been trying to gather, that the economic effect would be quite impressive. It would be several points of GDP and an improve, improvement in the yeah, GDP growth. Well, there is a lot of interesting ethics here, and well, I don't have the time to get through this. This is, of course, the main part of what I'm doing uh, in the practical ethics work. Um, so I don't have the time to really get into the uses stuff, but I can talk about that for hours. I generally think that, well, there are some ethical concerns. Most of them are practical, like getting in safety and making sure we're not over at work is stuff that doesn't work, or that people don't try things we don't really know how to handle. And then there are social issues. Well, could it increase inequality? I'm generally not sanguine about that, but uh, again, there is a lot of practical issues. I don't think there is any fundamental reason not to enhance our minds. Actually, there are probably very good reasons to enhance our minds, because without our minds, of course, we cannot achieve what we want as humans. And then, of course, we have regulation. This is on the drug bust from the, 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 the 17th century in Sweden. They are arresting these women for the drug of coffee. 
<laughs> it was, of course, banned mostly for tax reasons because it was expensive to import. But you can see this drug bust, and I really like how one of the ladies is kind of sweeping the last trends as usual as in Russian out. So we need to figure out a clever way of managing this. A lot of people right now are buying very cognition-enhancing drugs on the internet uh, and claiming, oh well, yes, I got a prescription for them from rather shady online stores. And although I'm a fan of free markets, I think there is something rather bad about having money going into a grey market with very little quality regulation and no medical oversight. If I'm taking an enhancer, how do I know that how that affects my blood pressure? Ideally, I should be able to go up to my GP and instead, instead, instead say, uh, I want to enhance myself. Could you think that I don't have any contraindications? But right now, of course, we have an interesting problem with the regulatory regime that says, oh, pills are only for illnesses. You need to be ill in order to get ill. The problem is, of course, we can redefine illnesses, which we're doing. So it seems that we're ending up in the future, in the, in the usual case. It's getting there it's far too fast and far too slow at the same time. Different things arrive in very different ways. But I don't think, I, just like Max, I think that's something we can handle. And I think Werner Villa actually said it very well in one of the, in my opinion, great cognition enhancement uh, stories. The motto for this uh, high school in, uh, is that we're trying to adapt. Well, the, the world is changing. It's changing in unexpected ways, unpredictable ways. Well, in that case, we better learn how to handle that change. We should adapt to that too. Thank you.